Hey everyone, Lucky here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys my Week 11 match versus JK41 and his route to Rattata. This is a rematch from our Week 2 battle in which I was able to win 5-0, mostly on the back of a Calm Mind Suicune, which um, I believe that he will heavily prepare for this week. Now, I am clinched for playoffs, which means I can have a bit more fun with my sets. Uh, JK, however, is not, and he is still uh, within a pretty contested race for the fourth slot in uh, our conference. And so I'm still going to be trying, uh, while I'm running fun sets, I'm still going to be trying to give him a good match and try to win because it wouldn't be fair if, if I would just uh, gift any of the people fighting for that last match a spot and I know he's going to prep pretty hard because he needs to win to stay in the playoff games. So with that being said, let's get into the teams. As always, you'll see my team on the left over there and JK's team is on the right consisting of Mega Scizor, Cartana, Lycanroc Dusk, Flygon, Whimsicott, Ditto, uh, Gudra, Mesprit, Vanillux, Dusk Noir, and uh, Regigigas. Now, since the last time we've played, he's made uh, a few changes. He ended up trading away his Volcanion and a Zerkatry in exchange, getting the Kartana and Gudra. And he also dropped something I can't quite remember, to be honest. Um, and he picked up the Vanillux, which I think was a, a counterplay to the division as there are two Garchomps in that division. So um, that's his team. I do think it was an overall uh, good trade for him. It made his team better as a whole. However, looking at his team, how it compares to mine now, uh, he lost his two main answers to Corviknight. So that's something I could potentially be taking advantage of. So... Offensive threats I see on his team. Mega Scizor is always a threat, especially if it sets up. Um, Kartana hits pretty hard, although both of those I have decent defensive answers for. Corviknight can check both pretty well. Um, Lycanroc Dusk is, uh, with its tough claws ability, can hit pretty hard. And then Ditto could be annoying if I tried to get a setup sweeper that uh, can beat itself with just one move. Um, so... That's something I have to somewhat be aware of and prep. Um, defensive pains to get past. Like I said, when I played the team that had Gudra before, Gudra is kind of a, a pain for my team specifically um, because a lot of the things besides Garchomp that would want to hit it hard are special. Um, and then Mega Scizor can be hard to take down without fire moves, um, which if you looked at my team already, I only am actually bringing one fire move this week. So... Uh, that's a thing to be worried about. So, what do I expect coming? I'm pretty sure Kartana's coming because he wants to deal with the Suicune, and uh, obviously a strong Leaf Blade is a pretty good way to deal with the Suicune. Um, so I'm almost certain that's coming. Lycanroc, I think, is coming because um, Excel, uh, Excel Rock is just a good move with Tough Claws, and uh, I think he'll bring that to deal with uh, Charizard. He could also run Play Rough to deal with Garchomp. Um, so I think Lycanroc is probably coming. And then Vanillux, um, I'm pretty, I know that's coming because he picked it up specifically for the Garchomp. And I'm thinking he's going to run one of two sets depending what he wants to do. Either I think he's going to run Scarf if he wants to outpace the Garchomp and kill that. Or he'll run uh, Specs because Vanillix gets access to Freeze Dry, and so that could potentially deal with a Suicune. Probable, I think he's probably going to bring Mega Scizor, even though he has said that he doesn't like Mega Scizor as a Pokemon. I still think it's he's brought it a lot, and it's still probably the best Pokemon on his team. Um, Gujar, I think, is probable his bring, just like I said before it, it could potentially be a defensive pain for me to get through. Um, also, uh, Fire Blast from Gudra is one of his ways that he could actually deal with a Corviknight. Um, and then possible, he could bring Mesprit. Uh, he could bring Ditto to deal with the 
potential setup, especially from a Garchomp. Um, and then he could also potentially bring Whimsicott. So, with that being said, let's get into what I'm bringing this week. So, just like last week, I am bringing a Choice Spec Suicune. That speed is there to outspeed a um, Modest Gudra, which also would outspeed a Modest Mesprit. Um, because I wanted the most power possible, so 252 special attack and modest with the choice specs. Um, left over an HP. Again, this is basically there, just I'm trying to hit as hard as possible to try to get Suicune some kills and climb on the leaderboard. And I'm pretty sure he will have prepped uh, a decent amount for a calm mindset this week, because that's what uh, did him in last time. So next Mon I'm bringing is... A setup Corviknight with Bulk Up, Brave Bird, Iron Head, and Roost. And this is because um, he really doesn't have anything that can offensively or that can two hit KO the Corviknight, especially if I'm bulked up. Uh, Kartana can potentially with a banded Sacred Sword, but. Other than that, like even with Life Orb, it's doing 50% max, and I can just roost off the damage. Um, and have it whittle itself down, which is how I handled it in the last match when I played Cartana earlier in the season. Um, Brave Bird hits mostly everything on his team. Um, and then I have Iron Head just to hit the uh, Lycan Rock, which res would otherwise resist the Brave Bird. And also, just if I didn't want to take um, some recoil damage, I could just go ahead and click the Iron Head. Next, we have a Choice Scarf, Lycanroc, Stone Edge, Excel Rock, Close Combat, Play Rough. Um, outspeeds everything on his team, bar the Winsicott. And uh, yeah, those moves just hit a lot of his team. Uh, Coco, this week I'm trying out a bulky Calm Mindset uh, with Calm Mind Roost and then Thunderbolt and Dazzling Gleam. Uh, I think he'd prepare for... Calm Mind speaking, but I don't necessarily know if he'd prepare for Coco being my Calm Minder this week. So this is a set I've wanted to try out for the season, and I can't remember if I actually did bring it or not. Um, but I thought this was a good opportunity to bring it because Thunderbolt and Dazzling Gleam uh, this week hit pretty much everything on his team. So I can get up um, a few Calm Minds to go to town. Um, I was considering, instead of Leftovers, running the Shooka Berry for the Flygon, but I don't necessarily think the Flygon's coming, and even if it does, that's basically just a free switch into Corviknight. So, that's the Coco set. Hit on top, I am running a Choice Band, so I'm running one of each Choice item this week, and uh, I'm ex happy to finally bring the Tech the to Top set uh, with Adamant Max Attack. Um... And then the speed is there, just enough speed to outspeed if um, either of his base 80s don't have any speed investment. Um, close combat is just his strongest move. And then Mach Punch, obviously boosted by Technician and Stab Priority. Triple Axel, also boosted by Technician and uh, would hit pretty hard. And then Thief is there, uh, mostly to hit the uh, Mesprit. Could also hit the Dust Noir if he happens to bring it. I don't think the secondary ability will come into play, but uh, it's a base 90 with Technician. It's a base 90 dark move for coverage. Um, and it actually does have a secondary effect, unlike uh, whatever the other dark move that's base 60 that it gets is. Um, the, one that, the one that hits all opponents, but that doesn't really matter. So uh, just even though the secondary effect of Thief probably won't come into play it's it's good to have just in case uh i'm hoping that i could get hit on top a kill this season it has yet to get one also yet to get a kill is kangaskhan so i'm um, running pretty defensive set uh max hp a decent amount of defense uh impish nature with wish mostly to get wishes up to potentially suicune uh because it's not having any recovery this week or uh Hit on top or even Coco, although Coco has Roost, so uh, it's mostly there for itself and the Suicune and maybe the Hit on top. Uh, but then Body Slam just for a good stab option. Fire Punch is there for the Kartana and the Mega Scizor. Uh, those 80 attack EVs are enough that if it's just a max HP 
Mega Scizor, no special defense investment. I can two hit KO it um, and then Sucker Punch just there for priority. So that's the team I'm bringing for this week. With that, let's get into the battle. All right, jumping into the game, we see that he's has brought the Katarna, the Vanillux, and the Lycanroc, just as I expected, and also the Mega Scizor, which I thought was probably coming. He did not bring the Gudra, which I'm happy to see. Um, he also brought the Ditto, and he brought the Mesprit. Ditto doesn't concern me too much because my two setup sweepers, as long as I keep them in decent range, they beat themselves because uh, as a ditto because I can recover off health and he can't so seeing his team I decide that I'm going to go ahead and lead Suicune just to get up a whole bunch of damage because nothing besides unless he leads Kartana uh, I don't think can O code Suicune maybe a Scar Scarf Vanillux I would have to actually check and see how much a freeze dry is doing um, so I lead Suicune, oops, have it on fast, that's not good, uh, I lead Suicune as he leads Mesprit. So here I'm just thinking that he's probably either going to U-turn out or try to get up rocks, so I'm just going to click a Specs Hydro Pump, hope it hits and try to get a bunch of damage. As he's faster and clicks Thunderbolt, as I hit the Hydro Pump and do... 80% now. Going to Calx, I can see that that's a non-boosting item, a Thunderbolt, as well as a... It's not very defensively invested, if at all. Um, and so I'm uh, thinking that it's probably Scarf at this point. So going to the Calx, I see that it is doing absolutely nothing to my Tapu Koko. And I really don't want Suicune to die. Um, and I don't want to risk... A potential roll on the Suicune or um, it missing the Hydro Pump. So I'm going to switch out here into Tapu Koko as he does go for the Thunderbolt and that does very little even under terrain, get recovery with leftovers. Here I think he's probably going to switch out so I'm going to take this as an opportunity to just go ahead and set up a Calm Mind as he switches out into the Mega Scizor. I'm going to just click a Thunderbolt, see how much damage I can do. That doesn't do a whole lot. But it shows me that he is fully spadef Scizor as he clicks the knock off and knocked off my leftovers, which is a bit annoying, um, but uh, it's not the end of the world. So here I'm just going to go ahead and set up another Calm Mind because I know that Bullet Punch isn't enough to two hit KO me as he goes for the roots to get up to full health. So here again, I know I can live two Bullet Punches, so I go ahead and set up a third Calm Mind and get up to plus three plus three. Um, so here I just try to roost off damage to get as full of health as possible, which the main reason I'm doing that is because I don't want uh, Ditto to come in and revenge kill me. And then I have to deal with a, um, plus three, plus three Tapu Koko. So, uh, this way I can just keep myself at decent enough health where even if Ditto comes in, uh, it's doing like 40% max, I think, to itself. So, and I can just roost that off. So, I'm just going to roost, try to get uh, as full as possible. Uh, let's get 75 here. I think I go for the attack. No, I'll go for the roost here. Uh, as I get almost full, so as I'm almost full, I'm not going to get higher, I go for the attack. Uh, here, I'm still roosting up to try to get as full as possible. Now, here is a fairly big moment in the game so i'm thinking that okay he is potentially go going to um roost up thinking i'm gonna roost and then we'll have to go through this again um so i think he's probably gonna roost so i'm gonna click thunderbolt however i i think that even if he does go for the bullet punch here uh i can still live a ditto coming in so that's uh he did end up showing going for the roost as um i claim kill with thunderbolt here he going to the vanillux um 
I'm thinking that no matter what the Vanillix does at plus three spit F, it's not doing much to me. So I'm just going to uh, roost up. It wasn't doing much unless he got a crit or a freeze, which has been unfortunate. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, kill the Vanillix. Him going first showed that he's Scarf. Um, so I go ahead and kill the Vanillix. That crit, I don't think, mattered at plus three. Um, so yeah. Two kills for Coco, but here he goes into Lycanroc, and uh, I'm going to switch out. I don't want... I, I wasn't sure if Excel Rock killed or not, um, but and if it didn't... If it did, whatever, I bring in something to revenge. But if it didn't, I was more worried about uh, Excel Rock not killing, me killing Coco, and then being at very low health as Ditto comes in and uh, does a ton. Because I don't think I really have much to deal with uh, a plus three plus three coco so i switch out here as he goes for the excel rock and i can see from this damage that he's banded and so i'm just gonna go ahead and go for a bulk up here as he switches out into mesprit and i know from calx especially especially if he's scarfed uh, which is what i think he is and he has no boosting item i know from calx that uh, Thunderbolt is not a two-hit KO. It's doing around 40%, so I can just go ahead and roost off the damage and get up to a decent amount of health. Uh, so here, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Roost off the damage. Get back up. I have leftovers as well. Roost off the damage until I, um, I get close to full, which at here, I'm almost full, so here I'm just going to go ahead and take the kill with Iron Head as that's what happens. Here he switches into Kartana. I'm just gonna see what he does. I'd go for a Roost because um, as I said last battle, and this is the exact same thing that's gonna happen again, as the last time I faced the Kartana is that Sacred Sword can't kill me. Um, and he has Life Orb, and so he's just gonna whittle himself down. So I know he's not gonna do enough damage without a crit um, to kill the Corviknight if I keep roosting and I think now I, I would run out of roost before um, he ends up running out of sacred swords but he would kill himself before I run out of roosts so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna roost off and uh, till he kills himself to life orb and as you can and as you can see he knocks off my leftovers which was a good play on his part because uh he really needed those gone to have any chance of two shotting um but here i think i just go for a bulk up because i know he can't two shot from that range and i wanted to try to make sure that i could do the most damage to uh, kartana as possible um, with brave bird so as he actually switches out into the lichen rock I tank that Thunder Fang, and obviously at plus two, that Lycanroc's dead. As I'm at 50%, I think an absolute max roll from Sacred Sword might kill here. Um, but he would uh, need an absolute max roll, and I'm not entirely sure on the actual HP value. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and roost off as he does not get the roll. And now I'm in range where he can't kill me. And so I'm just going to roost off. Sorry about this, but uh, this is the way to ensure victory. It's just roosting off until he gets uh, a decently low on health and I'm high on health. So the goal with this, I'm not going to have it end up killing itself to recoil. I really want to go ahead and have Corviknight get the kills. Because uh, at this point, I'm seeing also that as long as I can not... I mean, the game's in hand, but as long as I can't, don't get crit, I'm going to end up with 6-0. So here being mostly at full, I know he's going down to 13% after the life orb. So I'm just going to click Iron Head and kill it. And then Ditto comes in. And again, I am just going to roost off and bulk up damage. The bulk up is mostly just so I can do more damage. As he actually gets the flinch there, so a little bit of luck on his side, but uh, he's not going to win. Like, he doesn't have enough moves. Uh, so I'm just going to bulk up to try to do more damage. As he is out of moves and struggles. 
And here I'm just going to wait and try to get him down to this next move. I'm going to go ahead and kill it because I wanted to make sure that Corviknight got the kill and not recoil. Uh, so that is a good game to JK. Um, sorry about defensive setup mon, but that's how the game rolled. I uh, Once I got Corviknight in, it was pretty much game. And so, yeah, now we are at eight and nine and two for the season and uh spoilers for another game nolan ended up winning and so we are locked into the two seed at best three seed at worst so playoffs will be a rematch versus uh t4u and the boston red sox so next week's battle against nolan uh really doesn't matter for much at all so i will be bringing the most serious upsets um and so with that, I will see you guys next week for the most serious match of the season.